beautiful photographs and then your template might be a little bit eh, because the client said they just want a plain white template it doesn't showcase your product as well so what we want to do is wowing the clients with our photographs also wowing our clients with what the template looks like that is what is on people's fridges I had a guy at my um, local Chamber of Commerce when we go around and we say what we do he's a photographer of 40 years experience and he goes yeah I do um, custom portraiture and I'm not like these photo booths that just print these things and uh, charge you a few dollars and that you're a party thinking the great I take studio quality photographs they'll last for hundreds of years and pointed straight at me like I was janky so when I stood up I goes hi I'm Kathy I have fun time photo booths I am your fun director and the mistress of mayhem how many people in this room have my photographs on their fridge 90% I says how many people have his photographs on the wall two people how many people have his photographs in the drawers I goes I rest my case photo booths are here to stay so your templates matter because that tells your story of what you do. I used to teach Photoshop. I used to do, I do graphic editing. I do photo retouching. Am I now going to spend my time for four hours, which is what it is start to finish, emailing backwards and forwards, sending a draft. The customer said they want pink flowers. I send pink flowers. Oh, not those flowers, not that sort of pink. It ends up being a blue and a teal photo booth template at the end. So you can't trust your clients to know what you know. Don't give them control. Give them choices. When I first started with this lady here, my game step right up. I have a widget on my website. I send my clients to my website to choose their template. On that template, it's customized. If I want them to have a four by six, I don't show them two by six templates. All they can see is four by six templates because of my widget. The widget goes to show is. Um, I'm trying to pull it up right now, but the internet is still stinking <laughs> slow. So what they see is they see different templates. They choose the template that they like. They put what they want writing on the template. So it's their spelling. This is another thing. Not all of us are good spellers. The spelling is their spelling. They put it in there. We didn't. They put it in there. We use their direction. And then I always get the client to send me their invitation so I can match their colors with the color picker in Photoshop. I can make these templates match their invitation. Nine times out of 10, it's better than their invitation. It's cohesive with their brand. They've done save the date, they've done an invitation. Now the template is cohesive. It talks to them. So what we're gonna run through today is how the templates are on the website. We're gonna have one that we work on, which now you all have access to. When you get home, you can download it and use it from her, this amazing site. She brings out new templates most months, sometimes yeah, more than sometimes one a month. Sometimes I'll do two or... Mm -hmm. And they are different orientations. So you can use them for iPad booths. You can use them for mirror booths. You can use them for your DSLR booths. Mine are always 1200 by 1600. But sometimes I'll have it where I have my third picture is the biggest picture. I'll have two smaller pictures and then one bigger picture. They're warmed up by the third picture. So you'll see the different designs on here. Some of them have got four pictures and very little real estate to put writing. But if you've got a corporate event, um, you can design it so the picture is one side and there is an offer on the other side. So when they take their photo, they get that automatic promo code with the company's information on the other side. Great for expos, great for company activations. If you, you can go into a business and they take the photograph, they have to put their email in, the company gets the email from us as photo booths and the customer then gets that little thing half of their four by six photograph is a promo it's a win-win so you can use this in a lot of different ways but if you don't have a good template it does not matter how good your photograph is because one will contradict the other
you've got to match your qualities together. So. And having said that, usually if you've got a busy template, you don't want a busy backdrop. Background. Um, or if you're using if you're using a really simple design, then you have more flexibility to to do different. Um, but you'll see if you ever go through my my sample site or my sample images, they all have solid backgrounds because it they just set off the design so much better without actually um they, yeah they don't compete so you can and get so away with block colors of temp of backdrop a black a white this pink is beautiful blue purple is getting very popular right now even your green screens so I'm trying don't to compete find a with busies color. i've got way too many backdrops 75 percent of them are never used yeah Yes, because if I have to put such a simple template around it, it does an injustice. So I tend to upsell a little bit more now with the customization. I have certain ones that are my premium package, and they have a lot more detail on the templates as well. But most people choose the simple backdrop. I'll say, can I recommend a choice of three backdrops? And I give them maybe three that I recommend to choose from. Any more than three, you're confusing them. I use what, sorry? No. Okay. Mm -mm. I, tr I try to keep everything as simple as possible because I have other people that <coughs> will service my events, like my girls will service them. I want my brand to be clean and simple. I want it to be recognizable. I'm usually known because of my lighting and my I get my staff to help host people. When I've got people and there's five people standing together and they're all shoulder to shoulder and one's like this into the picture, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna go, no, 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 no. Let's bring you forward, let's put you backwards, let's have you three. They don't know what to do. They just see the picture and they don't wanna show it to anybody. So our job is to make them look as good as possible and to make our product be something that we're proud of. I look at pictures from eight years ago in my photo booth, they're very consistent to what they are now. So yeah, I can get my lighting great, but if my template doesn't complement my photographs, they're gonna remember, you're only as good as your last event. You really are. So one of the things is if you have a bad event, then the next one's gonna be better and you're back up and running again. I always like, this design here is one that I like to show how, it, how flexible it can be. Um, and it's, it's called um, Pastel Garden. But what if we changed it and made it something that has a, a lot of drama? So just to show how much how flexible you can be with a design that's created this way. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. So um, I, so imagine that your client sends you uh, like a photo of their invitation, or they have um, a a vision board that has all their color scheme or something like that so if we start with something um you can go when you if they actually send you an image you can put it inside of your file so that you can use the color picker to to sample those image or sample those colors directly off of what they give you so this is what i would do this is not the color scheme that i would choose right now um typically but i forgot to pull something up so i'm just going to grab something that is a, a lot darker. Does everybody here know what the color picker is in Photoshop? No. No. Okay, so the color picker is like a little eyedropper and you can pull two images up in Photoshop and you use that little eyedropper and you go, you pull the color, it will show it in Photoshop and then you know exactly the color to use on your template. Do you have to have Photoshop to be able to use this? Yeah. These are in layers. These yeah. are all Photoshop, yeah. We used to subscribe to Photoshop. There, it's, it's a $9.99, yeah, I'm like, yeah. for, for the... Package that is $9.99 a month. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's worth the investment. So, what I'm going to do is take that image that, pretend that this is the, the, the um, invitation or color swatch that your client sent you. So, I'm going to take that and place it so inside of this one just for now so I can sample the colors off of it. So you would go to file and then place embedded and then choose that, that other file 
and then that's the easiest way to do that and then you can get rid of it after you sample your colors so here um, you'll notice here is the overlay um, on the I, I'll start here on the very top layer of any of my designs you'll see the fonts that you need to download for the design in order to be able to edit those and have them work. So I give you all the links to download them from wherever they and are they're always licensed. Free. Yeah, they're all commercial licensed um, and free. So you never have to worry about paying for anything. And so here, the next layer that you would go to, uh, let's imagine we're gonna do this, a black background, like our very first, um, like our very uh, our sample. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired and I'm stumbling over my words, so forgive me. Um, so here, this bottom layer right, you see it says background layer, and then the layer right above it says um, color overlay, or sometimes I'll label it um, background color, but if you just double click on that, it right here, this part right here, double click there, and then it will bring up your color picker, which is this eyedropper, and you can tap right here and now you have changed the background color. And so then we'll close off the background and we'll go up to where it says overlay and we're gonna start changing the colors of these flowers to match a more dramatic design. So um, where it says olive, I'm probably gonna use the color overlay right here and then again, you have your color picker when you tap inside of there. Maybe I'll use green. So it's changed the leaf color to the same green. And then I'll go above to the outline. I don't like that outline color. So I'm gonna do another color overlay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Hang tight here. And now we with all your templates is went over it with gold. Your apertures always have to remain the same. I see some people on the on the Facebook groups where there's um, on the general Facebook groups and saying, How I'm taking my pictures but it's cutting everybody's head off. Because the How do I do what? frames of the picture they're taking is a different shape. Oh, where it says template. um so I'm in olive sure flowers right here. Yep. And then where it says outline olive flowers, I just went to color overlay and then okay. change the, like I use the eyedropper again to pick the color. Somehow I've got a crazy color back there. I wanted to change this maybe um, to an ivory background and then I decided I think I want to do this ivory and navy blue. But I, so that's how you use a color picker. And then you can just bounce around in there until you get what you want. And then where those um, olive flowers were, I'm gonna do that. And a nice blue color. And I don't think I want to do the overlay on the on the outline. So I want to keep all the outlines where the veining is the same. So just go to if you decide you put something there and you don't like it, just clear it. So you right click and then well here. I already cleared it. So you right click and then you have the option to clear. Or you can copy a layer style. So if I wanna if I change that and I want to use it in different places, you can copy it and put that on another layer. So let's say we did um, this olive background, so we'll copy this, that one and we'll change it on another flower color. So you right click and then you can paste the layer style and now it's been applied elsewhere. Um, but I don't want that color there, this is how you would do it. 
I want to go with a burgundy color. And I think I might go back to this green for the next one. I'm not used to doing this in front of anyone else, so it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> And then if you, sorry, if you've done something and you don't like it, you, here you can go over to history and then you can go backwards so you can go back and see the work that you've done. So I'm just going to go ahead and match the colors on this one and then and finish it out. Um, so then I can get rid of that top layer. So um, again, double click on the background layer and then just tap in the file that you want. And then we're done with that one. With your color overlay. And then this one, do color overlay, and then choose another color from our design. And again, just keep going through until you've got all your colors changed. If you were to use, um, if you were to use my um, gallery widget, there's an op when your clients fill out the form. So this is what it kind of looks like. So they choose a design from the gallery, and then it gives them the option to fill out a form. And right here, it it gives a. Um, you can customize the colors with the color picker. So a color picker will show up. You can also take these hex codes from, from the email that you receive and just copy them. So when you do the color overlay, here we're back to here and we're choosing our color lay. Here's where you enter your hex. So we copied it and then you just paste it and now it's that color red. I really wanted, this was not the color scheme I wanted. <laughs> and I had something picked out, but I can't pull it up. It's so slow here. Okay. What? Yes. And if I could just airdrop to myself, but it's, it's not working. <laughs> Okay, so we have addressed how to like do color editing if you if it's a downloaded template. Do you guys want to see how who has questions about like if you were to create something on your own, um, how you get the openings in your overlays and things like that. If you want to do something totally custom. But do okay. you have all that on your website as well? Um, no, but I can show you exactly how I would do it if I'm gonna do it from scratch. Okay. So, so do you offer classes or um, we have a few. What you, like, if sure. I want to start doing them myself, mm -hmm. how is there, like, do you offer anything for me to start doing that? Like, what do you do? Are I, you so, like templates? so, yeah, so I offer templates um, for sale, and then we have a membership club. Oh. And I'm not trying, I'm not here to promote it, or just, I wanted to show you guys if you were to purchase someone's design, that's typically how you would edit it, whether it be mine or someone else's. I think, um, the ones from photo booth owners, they have um, huge saturation sliders that you can change, but this is the way I always recommend doing it. Um, your question? From scratch? Yeah. You want me to do that now? Oh, no, you that. Sure, yeah. So you strip down the templates to just the yeah. Yeah, this is all yeah. in Photoshop CC. So Photoshop does a special deal, and it's called the Photographer Package. It includes Lightroom and Photoshop subscription base, and it's nine ninety nine a month. So what programs are most of you using? Do you Photoshop um, Search. 
I mean, what booth programs are most of you using? Dark room. Okay. So, do you require the 1800 by 1200, or do you do the full bleed with the 1844 by 1240? You do brief. Okay. So some do full bleed. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna show you how I would do it if I'm doing a full bleed. Um, and then if you're not doing a full bleed, you don't have to do the, um, the guides, but this is how, where I start. So you start from, you just go file, oops, I got a question for a and new. So like we're buying your service, this isn't your service. Your service, no. this is totally Photoshop, but we're buying you. Mm -hmm. What are we getting? Well, you can talk to me about that on the floor tonight. Okay, all right. I'll be right next to Julia, and um. So you're just giving us your lesson on Photoshop. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to. I. Okay. She can pitch me all she wants, but because she is one of my members, and a few of the others in here are too. Annie and Kat, and there's a few. You're just showing us how to use Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. So one month, I would get that thing with the flowers. Right. I, have, I can download that and change it for all my clients. Okay. So this is a, a way to simplify it because where do you get those graphics, right? Where do you get all those flowers and how do you layer them out into just the right colors? That's what, where my service comes in because it's all pretty well done for you and you can give your client the option to go to my the... My client can say, I don't like it in gray, that's what I want to put the purple yeah, in yeah. and I like this is my yeah, so they'll go through really they'll go okay. through the gallery. This is loading funny on here. On the okay. I gotcha. I so the they would go through the gallery. You just give them the access to that. And then that's where they choose the design that they want. And then they fill in their information. They can use the color picker and all of that. Okay. So that, that's what I do. Okay. So I'm going to show you why it makes sense to use a service like mine but also how to do it yourself if you want to. Because it saves you a lot of time. It makes you look good. It makes you look like you're a wizard actor when you go. Okay. Like 90% of the time I don't have to change anything on them. Uh, if it's like the floral ones like that, mm -hmm. they like them as is. So it's just the plain ones that I would just change the colors on. Oh. Yeah, my brides usually don't change. They usually say go with regular colors. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, so if you're using full bleed, a four by six is gonna be 1844 by 1240. And that's what your file's gonna start out like. And then to make sure that you know where your printer's gonna cut off because your printer's, for it to print the full, the full image without cropping or, um, or stretching anything, um, it's, it's usually better to use a full bleed, but there are photo booth programs like Darkroom that lets you build in the bleeds and the margins there on their own. So if you are using a program that requires you to use a full bleed, this is what we, how I start. I would go to new guide, because I need to know what, where my safe zones are. So I'm gonna do a vertical guide at 22 pixels because it's gonna cut off 22 pixels on the left and it's gonna cut off 22 pixels on the right. So we do a, a left guide, and then we'll do the right guide, and that one's going to be 1822 because we already were subtracting the 22 from the first one. And so now you've got the right guide done, and the full bleed for the um, the horizontal or the yeah hor the vertical is 1240. So we're going to subtract. Wow. Okay. So we're going to subtract. Um, 20 pixels on a horizontal guide and then um, so now we know the other one's going to be 1220 because we just subtracted the first 20. So that's now we've got our guide we know where our safe zone is. So just to make this as practical and simple as possible I'm just going to give you a really simple design but I'm going to show you how to cut out your images the quickest fastest easiest way. Um, you're going to need a calculator because you need to do your images in a 3 to 2 ratio. 
So let's say you're doing um, a four by six with three photos. Um, I'm just gonna go to the shape tool and I know that I need it to be at least 300 pixels by 200 pixels if I'm using a DSLR because the ratio is three to two. So I'm just gonna pop that in here and now I know what size, or I have the ratio that I need to keep, to do this, um, to do this. And then you, so you can just stretch it out and it should keep the ratio, but you're gonna double check and make sure. So you go back to the shape tool and you're gonna see you have width and your height. And I know that I can't use a fractionated um, uh, size when I put in my coordinate, coordinate, so I have to figure out, all right, okay, I want that to be 808. And I wanna make sure that the scaling was right, so I'm gonna go back to my calculator. I'm gonna do 808 divided by three, oops divide it by three and multiply it by two. Wait, that did not come out right. 808 divided by three and multiplied by two, which should give you your cross ratio, which would be 500 and we're gonna round up 500. Actually, we'll round down so that there's no cutting off. Um, 538 pixels, so we'll just type that in and now we've got our ratio. So here we've got our first box we are probably going to move it um, but we'll start here um, and then you can do on a Mac it's command J or on a Windows unit it is control J and that is let's see did this oh it did duplicate okay so I made three of them and I'm gonna move the first one down below the second one and now we've got two but I want them to be centered in the in the um, template so I'm gonna group them together so control G or command G will automatically group them or you can so that's the shortcut or you can highlight both both uh, select both and then ah uh, why is it not save it doing okay right click and then you can make a group from layers so there's two ways to do it but control G or command G is much faster. So now we're gonna um, center this. So we need, we go up here and then command T or control T and that will, wait, no, hold on. I gotta get this right. I think it's, is it the V? V, it, just the letter V is the um, shortcut to move or you can use this guy right here and it's gonna bring up your transform tool and now you want to tell it whether you want to align it to the selection or align it to the canvas. So we're going to align it to the canvas. We're going to center it in the canvas. Wait. Why is it not? There we go. So we centered it in the canvas and there you got it. But then I decided I don't like the margins aren't the mar there's not enough margin between the two images, so I might, um, why are they doing that? Oh, I've got the back one. Now I know why. That's why it looks like that. So we, um, I don't know what I just did. I nudged and I don't, don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go back to history and then I'm gonna go back to before I nudged it and then I'm gonna hide this third rectangle. So it seems a little complicated to do this from scratch. Even if you want to, um, if, you, if you download a template, buy a template, you get a free one from somewhere, sometimes it might be better to start with all the openings made for you, and then you can, um, add your overlay. yeah, and then you can add your overlay or make all your changes. So here we've got this. We want to check our coordinates, because that's very important. So you're going to highlight here, and then control T, and that brings up your transform tool. Why is nothing working? My T is not working. That's the problem today. So you'll see these here. These are your coordinates. This one needs to move just a little bit. The left coordinate needs to be on an even. It can't be a fractionated number because you can't put fractionated um, coordinates into your photo booth programs. 
Um, so you're just going to, I'm going to switch that to um, just make it 942. And then I'm going to take the other one and check the coordinate for that. You always, when you check your coordinates, want to make sure that this top left um, square is highlighted. And this will give you your left coordinate and your top coordinate. Sherry, as you were mentioning about the fractionated coordinates, how would you save it on a CSV? And then are those coordinates relevant? Say that again. When I create something like mm -hmm. this, um, I s end up saving it as a PNG. Yep, I'm um, importing it into the photo booth. Mm -hmm. Are the fractionated coordinates relevant at that point? Of the Only if you're so. If you make your image, if you make your image placeholders bigger than the openings, then it's not a problem. But if they're the same size as the image opening, then you're going to have a problem. So uh, that's why you want to pay attention to it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this um, this bottom one. Actually, I'll take this one, the third one that I created. And I want to align it with this bottom one down here. So you highlight the bottom one and then um, command or control to highlight the other one that you want to align. And now this time we're going to align to selection. And again, that's control T to get there with to the align tools. And then we're going to go to bottom. And now I need to bring that one over here. So I'm just going to highlight the one now and move it over. And that looks decent. So now I'm going to take this one and just drag it up into my group so that I can align all three of them centered in the template. So again, control T, we're going to align the canvas. And here we're centered both in the middle and like middle and center, <laughs> horizontal and vertical. So that's how you get your um, where your placeholders are going to be. But how do you make that into an overlay? What do you think is the easiest way to do it? I'm going to show you the simplest, easiest way. So I'm going to take these three. Um, I'm going to keep those there because I need to remember, since I didn't jot down what the image sizes were or the um, individual coordinate size, uh, coordinates were, I'm just going to leave this, like, leave them as shapes for now because I can always refer back to a shape and see what size it is. When I click on the shape tool, I can see the size 808 and 538. So I'll always have that if I leave the shapes intact. But to get the images cut out of the background, I'm gonna um, control G, oh wait, control, or, uh, let me start over, command J, so I have now just duplicated them. Or you can right click and hit the duplicate um, in the menu. So now I've got those. I'm gonna right click on these while they're highlighted and hit rasterize layers. And now I'm going to combine them. So right click again while they're all selected and merge them. And then I'm going to show you this amazing trick. I'm going to drag this out of here so I can collapse this group and just put it off to the side. Did it do it? Yes. OK. Now I've got my groups with my shapes. I hit it. So you just use this little eyeball to hide layers. See that? The eyeball right next to the layer. So I'm going to hide the one, the group that has the shapes that are still vector shapes. That means that you can, they can fluid, move, move them fluidly without pixelating or changing them, right? Yeah. So I'm going to hide, or, ah, all right. So now we've got this group and they're rasterized. So if we stretch them, they're going to pixelate the more you move them. Vectors, you can scale them to any size. So here we've got our rasterized images and the, thing, the reason you need to do that is because you can use your magic wand and select them. So if you make sure it doesn't have contiguous selected and then put your magic wand there again and now it just selected all of those boxes. And now if you go to the background, make sure the back, oh, go, hold on one second here. I'll 
show you that again. See this little lock right here? It won't, it's not gonna let you cut anything out of that if it's locked. So you're gonna just unlock the layer. And now with your um, boxes selected, hit delete. And now see what just happened? You've got the overlay. <coughs> Yeah, so just cut them out is the easiest way to do it. You could use clipping, masks, you can use all kinds of masking, but this is just the easiest, simplest way. It's so much faster. And now I've got my original shapes here, and I'm gonna merge my shapes while they're still vectors. Merge shapes. And then if you go over to the shape tool, it lets you control some things with them. So I'm going to take away the fill, and I'm going to add a stroke to make a frame. Here's some color. Maybe we'll make it four pixels. That's a good size one. But notice how it has this like um, dotted. You can change the stroke that goes around. So we're going to do a solid stroke. Oh, I probably need to deselect so it's not fill. out of here. Hold on one second. I was like, why are these moving? And I just realized it didn't deselect. Now that's better. Okay, so now we've got a nice solid frame around them. You can decide if you want your frame to align to the inside, which is what I usually do after I've cut it out. That way I make sure that there's not going to be any gap when you put the photos in, you know, align your coordinates later. So, um, or if you want it to go on the outside, you can do that too. And you can just see, or center. You can do this also if you want, say you want um, image openings with a rounded rectangle. You can select the rounded rectangle in the shape tool and do the same thing. the stroke and I just I do this so often that it's second nature to me so it's really hard to describe and it seems so complicated but once you get used to doing it it just is so fast so then I here I'm gonna right click on that's definitely not the right size but I'm just gonna show you so you rasterize it magic wand it go back to selecting your background layer delete and then it, you you've got it on so I'm gonna take that away And now, but now you can see how to do the rounded rectangles. And so now, here's where you either would add your graphics to the background, so you're going to put them just above your background layer. So let me see if I can find something. So I always select, I have these templates like this, like a raw template. I have that saved on my desktop, so you can make this one. Then you can change yeah, the yeah. of your frame color. You can change because you have it, and you just pull in your overlay on the top. So once you've created that, I've created one with three photos, with two photos, with four photos, and a vertical template as well. So I have those ready to just pull the overlays on top. You could come out with a button over here, couldn't you? <laughs> you, don't do, you don't have to do this every time. Once you so if we wanted to make this like a striped design, we just go to your rectangle. Uh, these are not selecting the way I normally want them to, I'm not sure. Okay, so. Uh, so maybe we'll do four stripes. My keyboard's not working the way I want it today. Sorry guys. So I made my first my first stripe, now I'll make another stripe and put it just below that one. And then you can, anytime you have a shape, you can just double click on the shape layer in the layers palette and it'll bring your color picker up so you can choose another color. And again, if you have sample colors off something else, you can just go to that. 
So in Command J and do it another again, and then just use the V tool to, um, that's your move tool. So just the letter V is the shortcut. And then that will um, bring up the move tool so then you can. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna. These are some hideous colors, but you can see what we're doing. Stop the uh, I just said you picked a color because of purple, and then you said there's some hideous colors. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair is purple and pink. I'm not. Purple oh. and pink. That screen looks way different than my screen. Because this is like the reddest red and the most royal blue here. So, no, I didn't do that. So, now you've got all four shapes selected. If you use shift and pull down while they're all selected, you can fill out your, your template to the whole width and so they'll evenly change shape. Now, we're gonna drag those while they're still selected right above the background layer. So I took them all and dragged them down and they're directly above the background layer with the cutouts. So now you can see where the frames are. This is not something I would normally design, but this is what we're doing on the fly. <laughs> and so while they're all selected, hit create clipping mask, and it goes right into your background. So now you save it as a PNG, and you load it into your photo booth program. So I use my wedding invitations. I'll take a piece off the wedding invitation, and I'll put it in like that. And now you can see where I, I must have hidden these by accident, but you can see where the, um, the yeah, exactly. So if I wanted to put a border all the way around these, I would know where I can't go beyond. So say I just want to add a, a shape border around it all. I don't know why it's defaulting to that. And now I've got that. And it's still, it's too low here, so it's hitting the bleed, so I know that's not gonna be right. So just use the move tool. Oh, got the wrong thing. And there you are. And then I would just make sure that it is centered, so check the um, transform tool. Make sure that it is aligned to the canvas and then line it up. So who has questions? Because that seemed like a lot. Well, Even though it seems so simple. It, it was like photo, Photoshop users or you know, a little basic Photoshop. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people try to do Photoshop. I mean, I use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I probably do it in a more complicated way. Than so that's the fastest way I can yeah. explain how to do I it. Yeah, I can see that. I just use yours and put around the background if I need to make a custom one. Yeah, that's the fastest way so that you don't have to make your own image openings. It's just, um, so it was, we just dropped the first year price from one night or from two ninety nine to one ninety nine. That'll be permanent. And then the annual renewal fee is one ninety nine. But if you sign up during the show, um, you can sign up with a special for 149 a year. So it, like the overall price is better than it's ever, ever been. So um, what does it offer? Like are you limited to so many templates No, it's unlimited downloads. Oh. So you, that's the nice part about this. Um, ah. Here you've got, this is an embeddable widget that you can put into your website. Um, this is embedded into my website. So um, again, you have so many options. These buttons aren't showing up right on the screen. I'm not sure why. Uh, so all the templates show up on there? Yeah. So they're all automatically loaded in when, new one, when I create new ones and release them each month. They automatically get loaded. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to do anything to load them. They're all just there. And so again, you, you have loads of options. And I don't know 
know why it's doing that. This internet's crazy today. You've got like baby shower. This was a peace out 2020. <laughs> Who didn't want to say that, right? Um, graduation, but this one could be this one here could be used as a um, as a New Year's too. These this 2020 in the background is just editable text. Um, so there, there's all kinds of different themes, but the nice part is, is that your client, if they're looking for something like, if they are, I, they're looking for our deco designs, it'll pull up what we have in that, in those themes. If you have a, um, mirror booth, then those options will populate. I'm, cha I'm working on updating some keywords, but so just depending on, or you choose wedding or whatever, that's, and then they, they'll choose it, and then once they do, it'll send you an email with all the text that they want edited, um, colors that they might want edited, and then um, it'll send you an email, tells you exactly which file they wanted, where to download it, and then you go from there, and then you just make your edits in Photoshop. So it saves a lot of time. You don't have to worry about picking fonts. Fonts are probably, they take me the longest. I probably use like the same five, you know. Are you integrated with Chuck Cherry? I am. Yeah, Check Cherry and Booth Book. So um, whichever program, CRM, they're all both integrated, so. What area of St. Louis are you in? Um, I'm actually about an hour outside of St. Louis. I used to live in St. Charles County in O'Fallon, um, but I recently moved to um, Sullivan. Um, what? Oh, I said you're by yeah, Michelle. yeah. Are you in Missouri too? I'm in Lavin. Well, you, we talked last yeah, night, right? Yeah. Where are you? Imperial. Oh, okay. So s the south side. Yeah. <laughs> um, I grew up in Jefferson County, so yeah. yeah. I grew up in Cedar Hill and Hillsboro. Yeah. Are you on Creative Cloud right now, or do you have to download? Um, or like the actual version? So Creative Cloud is actually, it's a downloadable software that you put onto your own computer but it updates, so it's a subscription based. You don't have to go into yeah. their, um, like Photoshop CC, you don't have to log into their website to, to do the work, you just you download it onto your own computer. But it will auto, it'll update automatically when they release um, updates, or, yeah. So yeah, there's lots of neat features about it that, um, like some people, some of our members use Photoshop Elements, and you definitely can, but I like CC so much better because it gives you the shape tool um, with all the flexibility of adding the, um, the stroke around them and changing that stuff. And it keeps, if you, you were to use the um, effects tool instead of the shape tool, the, um, the bigger your stroke, if you're using effects, the more rounded it gets, but if you use the shape tool, it keeps it nice and square. So. Just, yeah, those are just some, uh, that's why I like CC so much better. Did I teach you anything new? Like I said, I, I clear your music <laughs> yeah. because it's easier for me. Yeah. Um, I'm still learning Photoshop. I should have gotten some graphics to drop in here, but I was on the floor until 2.40, and I ran upstairs and changed my clothing. <laughs> How do you how do you bring your images in? Do you drag them in or do you use the place tool or copy and paste? Oh yeah. Okay. So, um. Did you have a question? Oh, 
easily. I have a couple videos that make it, you, you go through them and just follow along. It makes it really simple. And the, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can, that's the nice thing about the membership, too, because if you want to do um, two, like, you have add ons, right? So you have your DSLR that you have your, and then some people put an iPad booth off on the side of the, you know, like on the dance floor over by the cocktail area, and then they've got roamers going around sometimes. So to be able to mix and match the templates, and that they all, they all integrate, or they, so yeah, you've got that option. Um, and that's the nice thing about the unlimited downloads, whereas, the, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's another membership program. I think they give you one free one a month. Um, but then if you want to add other stuff on, you're paying at least $20 more for it. So. I use the square and the small formats. It says for virtual users too. Yeah. Um, I hear a lot that they're using, um, like if you want to do GIF, in a print, so you've got they'll so they'll use the um, single image to to use for the GIF, and then and then they do the print on the um, multi image with using those three you know three images that they created the GIF for. So I've got to fill out some of the um, the single image um, four by sixes. I'm working on that as soon as I get done with all the um, portrait oriented ones, and so we'll have everything built out by the end of this year.